All right, so we want to look at um, frequency distributions. And going back to the data that we used previously about the out-of-pocket um, prescription drug costs. And so I'm going to rewrite that um, frequency distribution. And I'm going to put the class midpoint, the frequency here for now. And so we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven classes. And the midpoint was 172.5. If I remember correctly, the lowest value in the data was 155, and the highest was 405. And I think each bin has a 36 uh, of bin width. This is going from memory. But well, we constructed this back a few examples ago. And so continuing to use this data and it's the same one that's in the PowerPoints. 352.5 and 388.5 and the frequency of these were 3, 2, 5, 6, 7, 4, and 3. Remember we said, hey, look, there was stuff bunching up in the middle here. And we used this to build our first histogram. Well, I said when you got data like this, you lost information. We no longer have every, every piece of data in here. Um, if I were to see this histogram um, plotted out, let's see if I can do this quickly. up to seven up here so I'll go one two three four five six seven that works I'm gonna scroll down just a bit to do my bin centers so one two three four five six and so this has the 172.5 as my center bin and so on for each one with this being the 388.5 and so the first bin goes up to 3 so the histogram is going to do this I'll fill in this one here and the second bin only goes up to 2 so it comes over to here the third bin goes up to 5 so 3, 4, 5 It's the hardest part about drawing bins freehand on a tablet is it's hard to use the rulers. Yep. And then in this bin went up to six, so it goes up one more. And this bin goes up to seven. And then this bin was down to four. So let's see. One, two, three, four. And this bin was at three. And I'm going to increase my pen size here and just, right, when we see these, this is all filled in. And that tends to be the graph that we get when we go to graph these things. Is all of this stuff gets filled in. So that's a better way of filling it in. And that's the information we get reported. So this goes back again to the beginning of the chapter when we started building histograms before we did the stem leaf plots and the other forms of data. Sorry about the weird squiggle in the middle. I think this coloration is probably better than the one I was using before. But in general, that tends to be what you get when you get data. You get this weird graph. And you don't get the actual data points, and so you're not sure um, what the mean, median, and mode is. Well, I can recreate the frequency table from this. I can look at my bin midpoints, and I can go, hey, that went up to 3, midpoint 3. Hey, that went up to 2, midpoint 2. So if I saw something in a paper, and I just had the histogram, I could recreate the, the frequency distribution with the midpoints. Well, if I want to find the mean from it, I, I can't recreate the data, so I cannot get the exact mean, but I can approximate it 
using the midpoint as an approximation for these items. And so what I want to do is I want to multiply the data by the frequency um, to create what we're going to call um, the mean of a frequency distribution. And we find that by summing up all the data point midpoints times the frequency and divide it by the number of things. Well, the number of things was the total of the frequency, n equals the sum of the frequency. And when we did this, there were 30 data items, right? 5, 10, 16, 23, 27, 30. So what this does is it assumes that these are averaged around the midpoint. And so it adds up those averages and divides them over the, the total number of samples. This will not return the actual mean of the data. It will give me an approximation to it, and a pretty good approximation. So 3 times 172 is 517.5. 2 times 28.5 is 417. 5 times 244.5 is 1,222.5. 6 times 280.5 is 1,683. And I'll just continue doing my multiplications here because I've done them before. And so the sum of x times f is adding up this column. And we get 8,631. So the mean from this frequency distribution is going to be 8,631 divided by 30, or approximately. Two hundred and eighty-seven point seven, and this was dollars, right? Because it was the out-of-pocket expense. Now, if you go back to the original data set and you add it all up, um, you had two eighty-five point five. So notice these are not the same, and I'll say that's the true mean. I'll give it a T for true mean. And so, but we can approximate it, and this actually happens quite a lot. Um, you will get um, a summary of data. You'll get a table. Um, but the data itself might be too large to print or produce, um, or it's just not needed um, for you to go through the individual pieces of data to read the summary. And so from the summary, you can recreate a mean. And this follows the idea that our data is going to centralize and spread out evenly. And if it spreads out evenly, each bin's midpoint is a good average for what's in the bin. And being off by $2 out of 287 is less than 2%. So it's an okay approximation.